My brother has friends over, so if you hear other voices, that's what that is. I apologize in advance. Hey everyone, CW Music here. Hi, I'm CWD. And we're going to take a gander at this new Tune Yards album, I Can Feel You Creeping Into My Private Life. This is the third full-length album of the alternative pop, indie rock, baroque pop, kind of a weird, folkish kind of duo in a way, Tune Yards, fronted by singer-songwriter, producer Meryl Garbus. These two have been around for quite a while now. They've put out at least, like I said, three albums, with this one being their third. Within this decade, they've definitely made an impression on listeners being this sort of weird, eccentric, experimental type duo with one of the biggest highlights of the group's sound being Meryl Garbus's vocals. She is an incredibly eccentric and out there vocalist. I'm trying to think if Ella Fitzgerald or Billie Holiday mixed with someone like Bjork. Tune Yards have definitely been a band that I have been pretty interested in, even if I haven't really visited Nicky Knack all that much. I like that album that they dropped back in 2014. It's kind of hard to believe that album is going to be four years old this year, and it's actually even more difficult to believe that it's been four years since we had a Tune Yards record. Nicky Nag was an album that was basically just all over the place and it was a definitely enjoyable listen. So hearing that there was going to be a new Tune Yards record coming soon, I definitely wanted to sink my teeth into what Meryl Garbus and bass player Nate Brenner will have in store for the listener. So I gave this album numerous listens. I gave this album definitely more than just a fair shot considering the fact that I actually love this record quite a bit. I think Meryl has came through with one of the most straightforward releases she's ever put out, for sure. The album is 12 tracks. It's about 42 minutes long. So, not long, per se. It's actually significantly shorter than Nicky Knack, if I remember correctly. What Tune Yards do all across this album is basically come through with a more electronic driven album than what Nicky Knack was doing. I definitely think that the sort of switch up in style of going from this weird freak folky experimental type group to this sort of more straightforward afrobeat electronic type music duo has definitely yielded a lot of great results. Take the opening track Heart Attack for example. I love like how so much is stacked on these two lone piano chords that just kind of drive all throughout. All this different percussion, all this string, all this synth just driving the track home whilst this one piano chord is being played throughout along with Meryl's fantastic vocal delivery. I love how catchy the hook is on this track. It's giving me a heart attack, tack, tack, don't let me lose my soul. Or a track like Honesty, which is incredibly multifaceted and jagged. I love the sort of more slow and ballad-like break that it goes in with how deep and booming the bass is. I love how driving a lot of the percussion is on tracks like ABC123 and Hammer. She's definitely channeling her inner Jlin without going so far as putting out a footwork album. I love the catchiness and the free-flowing spirit of a track like Look at Your Hands. The track Home, I was kind of conflicted about at first considering how I wasn't really sure if her going for more off-in-the-distance sort of vocal sound on the hook and then coming in and singing and all that was gonna work, but the more I noticed how much the track was progressing, the more I noticed how dynamic the song was. I just ended up loving this track as well. She definitely channels the inner DJ that she is on the majority of these tracks. A track like Hammer definitely channels in her inner house for sure, along with tracks like Private Life and to an extent the closing track Free. I definitely think she struck gold with the electronic transition. She took the project going from a more freak focus thing to electronic thing. The only track instrumentally that I didn't really care all that much for is Coast to Coast. 
just because of how standard and straightforward the track is, more so on a more catchier and mid-paced sort of groove to it. It sounds like something that could be played on the radio. Although I definitely wouldn't mind if I heard the song on the radio. Tune Yards definitely came through on an instrumental front with an invigorating listen and it definitely helps drive the sort of concept that Merrill is trying to go for. The album pretty much centers around things like climate change, racial equality, gender equality, basically a social hierarchy, but it more so focuses on what identity means to an individual. The track like Who Are You, she definitely is very critical of the silence and the obscurity of the individual not really expressing themselves. She's pretty much asking, hey, who are you again? I've been pretty much been suffering throughout the course of my life for kind of embracing the individual I am, but who are you to say or complain about anything when you've just been complacent with this lack of identity that you've inherited. Trick a track like Now As Then, I definitely think that she is very critical of the criticism that women have received for stepping up and having a voice. Going so far as to say that she doesn't want to be a woman if it means not being human. The track ABC123, she is more so talking about how the world is being destroyed and now there's going to be a new breed of alphabet that's going to come out of this sort of new apocalyptic era that we're living in now. And the track Colonizer was weird as well, how she keeps reiterating that she's using her white woman's voice to sort of discredit the stories and legitimacy of someone of a different race and gender. The whole album conceptually is incredibly weird and abstract. I'm still listening to it to kind of pick apart the pieces here and there, but I think she definitely has me intrigued with the sort of identity politics that runs throughout the course of the album. A track like Private Life, which says the title of the album in the song, as well as the end of the song, Colonizer, she, t I guess, talks about how she doesn't care for much for her own voice, but the voice of another person. Her voice is all drowned out and everything. I think she also touches on introversion here on this track a little bit. And now she more so wants to find this sort of individual that's been trying to get to know her, like, for a while. Or maybe she could be talking about the government. I think she might be being a little satirical on this track as well as the numerous tracks here. I colonize her like ABC123. There's not really a whole lot I can say negatively about this album. What Tune Yards do on this album is basically come through with a solid set of pop tunes and sort of indie rock and sort of house driven songs. Each song, even a few that I don't really care all that much for in relation to other tracks, she definitely is able to flesh out these different song ideas and make them solidify in the listener's ear and the listener's memory. Not only that, but she's also able to deliver an intriguing and thought-provoking message all throughout based on the issues with social inequality and what's going on with the world at large. Sort of making an album about being this individual in the present time, which I think is very fascinating. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to what Tune Yards going to be doing next, especially if albums after this one are going to be this interesting and this hard-hitting and straightforward and intricate. This album is a plus 2.5 out of plus 3. This so far is in the front running of being my favorite pop album of the year, even though I understand that there's not really a lot of pop music that came out yet, but Definitely going to be within the highlights for me when it comes to what pop music had to offer in the year 2018. But if you give this album a listen, what you think of it? Did you like this album? Did you dislike this album? What was the reason for that? And what you consider listening to and reviewing next? CDI Music here, signing off.